Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna go over calculations for force, work, and power. I couldn't find a good video with simple explanations of how to calculate force during a barbell back squat, as well as work and power, so that's why I made this video. So we're gonna go over some simple calculations and add a few variables to this uh, and show you guys how these calculations actually work. And then at the end of the video, we're actually gonna take some practical takeaways from how do we actually use force, power, and work numbers to make decisions about how we train our athletes. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so let's start off with the definition of force. And force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we're gonna keep this example very basic to start and then we're gonna add some variables to it later. But to start off with a very basic calculation, we're gonna calculate force of an athlete doing a 100 kilogram back squat. So we're just gonna keep it simple and calculate the force for a barbell to move against the acceleration of gravity, but we're gonna assume here that the barbell is moving at a constant velocity. So in this equation, just to keep it simple, force is gonna be equal to the 100 kilogram mass of the barbell times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And if we do that math, 100 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, we're gonna get 980 newtons. So in this simplified example, again, not accounting for the athlete's body weight, not accounting for accelerating the bar, but just moving the bar at a constant velocity against the acceleration of gravity, this athlete is going to be exerting 980 newtons of force to move that barbell. Now, in this next equation, we're gonna actually assume that we're accelerating the barbell up. Now, when we're actually lifting a barbell, there's varying amounts of acceleration at different points of the lift. You might get to a sticking point where you accelerate up, stick and then you accelerate again. Um, but we're just gonna assume a constant acceleration of 0.8 meters per second squared throughout the ascent of this barbell squat to keep this equation still fairly simple. So going back to our equation, F equals MA, we're gonna calculate force is equal to the mass, the 100 kilogram barbell, times, in this case, the acceleration is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared plus the acceleration of the barbell upward of 0.8 meters per second squared. So that 9.8 plus 0.8 is gonna get us a total acceleration of 10.6 meters per second squared. And then we're gonna multiply that by 100 kilograms to in this case get 1,060 newtons of force. Okay, so you may have some questions based on this example. One question that you might have is, what is going on with that 9.8? Isn't it a negative or isn't it a downward acceleration? And the answer is yes, that is a downward acceleration. The pull of gravity is, is directionally negative. It's down towards the ground. So whatever negative acceleration gravity has to create, we have to create an equal and opposite acceleration upward just to get to zero. So if we were gonna move at constant velocity, we have to exactly counteract that acceleration. And if we wanna accelerate the bar even more to speed up on the way up during the barbell lift, then we have to add to that positive acceleration a little bit more. So that 9.8 plus, in this case, the 0 0.8, is gonna get us that total acceleration in the positive of 10.6 meters per second squared. All right, so let's get into work. And speaking of work, this video is a lot of work, so make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this to help you in the future. All right, so work is equal to force times displacement. So we just calculated force, and we're gonna use the 980 newtons example of the constant velocity equation that we started with. So knowing that we're applying 980 newtons of force now we're gonna assume that we're gonna move that barbell about one meter. So from the bottom of the squat to the top of the squat, we're gonna assume that the athlete's displacing that bar one meter. Now, given that, we can determine that 980 newtons times one meter of displacement is gonna get us a work of 980 newton meters or joules. So you might be wondering what is work? And it's kind of an intermediary between force and power. So we need to calculate work to go from force to power, which is where we're gonna go next. So now we're gonna get into power, and the equation for power is work divided by time. So we just calculated our work of 980 joules, and in this equation, we're gonna do two different times, and we're gonna compare them. So we're gonna assume that one barbell athlete is squatting the concentric with a, a two-second concentric, and the other athlete is doing a four-second concentric. So you can imagine that one athlete is, is fairly quick out of the hole and the other athlete's doing more of a slow grinding rep. So let's go ahead and do those equations. 
for the first athlete doing a two second concentric, they're gonna be doing 980 joules of work to displace that bar about one meter with the given force. And that's gonna be done in two seconds. So we're just gonna do the 980 joules divided by two seconds to get us 490 watts of power in this case. And then the second athlete doing 980 joules of work over four seconds is gonna be doing 245 watts of power. So what you can see from this example is doubling the speed of the squat, doing the squat, the concentric in two seconds versus in four seconds doubles the power output. So we have 245 watts versus 490 watts. So what you can probably see here is that there are a number of training variables that we can manipulate in order to maximize power, force, or work. Now, if we wanna maximize power, we can adjust the time portion of the equation by doing a lift faster. Now, if we want to maximize force, we actually probably wanna increase mass or increase the acceleration of the bar. To actually optimize for force, we usually are using heavier loads, whereas when we're optimizing for power, we're typically using lighter loads and moving faster. So some practical takeaways based on research here is that the optimal load to generate maximal power during, for example, a loaded jump squat can range anywhere from 10 to 50%, but for most athletes, hits around 30% of one rep max. So that's actually a fairly low load when we're thinking about how we program for athletes. We very rarely program 30% one rep max, um, but in this case, that's actually the load that's going to maximize power. So this is where we're gonna do dynamic effort work, med ball throws, jump squats, uh, loaded jump squats, things like that that are gonna put a little bit of weight onto the athlete, but actually maximize power output because of the time portion of that power equation. And then one thing that you can't necessarily see from just this chart, but if you read the whole research article linked down below, you can see is that weaker athletes tend to see a lower percent of one rep max being optimal for power generation for them, whereas stronger athletes tend to see closer to that 50% or 40% one rep max type of load be optimal for power generation. And that has to do with a number of things like muscle fiber types and the neuromuscular adaptations they've had from training and their biomechanical movement strategies and a lot of other factors. Uh, but it's an important takeaway when we're thinking about how we should program for our beginners, our novice, and our elite athletes in order to maximize some of these variables. And one caveat to this is that power actually isn't always the optimal thing to shoot for. We can do training where we're optimizing for force. We can do training where we're optimizing for rate of force development or impulse. And I've actually done a video on rate of force development, which you can check out in the description below. And if you wanna see a video on impulse, I'd be open to doing one on that in the future. So just comment that you wanna see that video and maybe I'll make one in the next few weeks. If this stuff is exciting to you and you like learning about this, make sure you subscribe and also join the Strength and Conditioning Study Group on Facebook where I do Facebook Lives, teaching concepts like this all the time as well as practice questions for the CSES exam. It's a really fun group and you'll definitely learn something. All right guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.